This is Unwind Your Mind Back to God Written by David Hofmeister and read by Tarana Singh In today's episode, we continue unlearning the world with Book 2. In Chapter 7, this is the first section, Beyond the Body. The home of vengeance is not yours. The place you set aside to house your hate is not a prison, but an illusion of yourself. The body is a limit imposed on the universal communication that is an eternal property of mind. But the communication is internal. Mind reaches to itself. It is not made up of different parts which reach each other. It does not go out. Within itself it has no limits and there is nothing outside it. It encompasses everything. It encompasses you entirely. You within it and it within you. And there is nothing else anywhere or ever. Text chapter 18 Section 6 That paints a picture of mind. In the very next sentence, he contrasts it with the body. The body is outside you and but seems to surround you, shutting you off from others and keeping you apart from them and them from you. It is not there. Text chapter 18, section 6, para 9. The body is kind of like on the surface of the mind, where all the projections and attack thoughts are, way on the outside. It is outside you, but through the experiences of the deceived mind, it seems to be wrapped around your mind. It seems like consciousness is somewhere in the head, looking out through these eyes. Friend, that is because we cannot seem to deny the brain. Tell me again, what is the real story about the brain and the mind? David, the mind is not in the brain. It is not in the body. I think the best analogy that the Course uses over and over is that of the dreamer of the dream. A friend recently said to me, I was reading the Course the other day and I just got something that I never got before. I used to think of the script in terms of all these other people out there, but I did not include my own body in it. But it is out there too. To me, that is the best analogy of the mind. In the sense that the dreamer of the dream is watching all the characters on the screen, including its own character. But the mind has no reference point in this world. It does not go out. The mind is so expansive that there is no limit. When you ask where the mind is, you have to understand that place is a concept in the split mind. Only a deceived mind could even have such a crazy idea as place. Friend, it says in chapter 16, his kingdom has no limits and no end and there is nothing in him that is not perfect and eternal. All this is you and nothing outside of this is you. Text chapter 16, section 3. And somewhere else it says, there is nothing outside you. Text chapter 18, section 6. Here it says that the body is outside of you. Obviously that means that the body is nothing because there is nothing outside of us. Even the body is not outside of us because we are mind. 
we are having this nightmare and are sitting there drawing these little stick figures. This one burns up in a car wreck and this one does this to that one. But it is us feeling guilty because we think that we could get away from God. And we think we are playing with this until we just take our hands away from the controls and recognize that we did not do any of it. David, all the roles were assigned and everybody is just playing their part. Every time you hate somebody, it is because you believe they are not fulfilling the role the way you want it to be fulfilled. Friend, I assigned you a certain role and you are not doing it. David, the Course tells us that a metaphor for the assigned role is that there are always they are always our saviour. Whether it is the wife, husband, child or boss that you think is supposed to act a certain way or give you a certain thing. The ego produced all these forms because the deceived mind is trying to use relationships to take vengeance out for the past. It really believes that it was deprived in the past and is therefore attracted to certain people and situations. It wants these people to fulfill roles and needs that it thought it was deprived of. It never works. The whole idea of deprivation is a scam. It comes from the attraction to guilt. As long as we set people up to be God substitutes, from which we have all these expectations, of course there is going to be fury and anger when they do not seem to get fulfilled. Friend, it is just another of the countless ways of making sure that we stay in ego. The ego is one nasty decision, just one. But there are so many ways that we are attracted to staying in that thought. Because of our belief that we are the ego and our fear that love will swallow us up. The only thing the ego does is weaken us either by separation or by trying to convince us that we are weak or no good. Because without that thought, we would remember who we are. We are scared to be happy and attracted to misery. It is like I believe that as soon as I get happy, Somebody is going to come along and burst my bubble. And I will be the fool. To me, that demonstrates my attraction to pain. David To pry away from the ego, you have to have a sense of how the ego thinks. That is why we have all these sections on the laws of chaos where Jesus lays out the ridiculous things we believe. There are myriad forms that seem to obscure the content. Like you were saying, thoughts that separate or weaken us. The ego makes all these forms as a mirage of complexity to keep obscure its basic way of thinking. As soon as we can get in touch with the backwards ways of thinking, which is what the ego is, then we can tease it out and start to feel into something that is apart from these thoughts. But while they are swirling in our minds, we feel the feelings and we think the thoughts. There is such a strong belief that the thoughts are real, that they really are my thoughts, but they are outside you. They are not who you are. I am reminded of the section in the Course called The Immediacy of Salvation. A line that gets me every time I read it is, Be not content with future happiness. 
Text chapter 26, section 8. It is so common for people to see themselves on a spiritual journey, thinking, I am certainly not there now, but in in another year or ten years, or maybe in another lifetime, I will get there. Do not project this out into the future. Do not project salvation into the future. Friend, it is just another excuse for not being happy right now. David Right. You were not deprived in the past. If you are feeling upset, it is a present decision. It has nothing at all to do with anything that seemed to happen in the past. It has everything to do with your interpretation right now. Do not project your anxiety off into events that you are afraid of going to happen in the future. Bring it back. It is a present decision right now. Jesus says that you really believe there is a gap between the time that you forgive and the time that you will receive the gifts of forgiveness. That is the fear in the mind. The fear that if you followed him, the rage of the world will rest on your shoulders. There is such a fear of chaos. And here Jesus is telling you to be totally defenseless. The key is to just totally let go.